Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to create a horizontal ticker in Adobe After Effects. So basically what a ticker is, is it's at the very bottom, it's like a horizontal text. Uh, news stations use it a lot, so learning how to do this is very helpful in recreating a newscast or you know, kind of emulating a newscast on whatever your project is. Because a lot of times you'll wanna make like a fake newscast about whatever the event is, and you wanna have that ticker at the bottom. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do that. Let's get started. It's gonna look a little bit like this right here. You'll see that it comes across, and we can just have as many as them of them as we want, and then it keeps infinitely looping. We're gonna be using an expression to do that so that we don't have to keep copy and pasting things. Um, it'll make it a lot easier for us. So let's just jump into a new composition right here, and I'm just gonna keep it really basic. So we're gonna create ourselves a new solid. We're gonna make it white. That's gonna be our background, so we can go ahead and rename it. Fine, we'll right click. Rename it to um, background. And then we're going to create ourselves another solid and this one is going to be just the bottom area. You can give it, make it really any color, so we're just gonna call it like bottom bar. Let's jump back in the composition view here, and so what we need to do is actually go up here to layer, solid settings. We want this probably as a red, so when you create the bottom bar, make it, a red, make it any color you want. Um, so I'm gonna go with a red this time instead of the green. We're gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna click on this rectangle tool up here, so make sure the bottom bar is selected, then click on the rectangle tool, and then we're just going to create a little rectangle down here that sort of gives us the bar. And you can keep it like this, and this is where you can kind of style it. Maybe I could like control D this so I can duplicate it and use the arrow keys to bring it up a couple. Then I'll drop this one beneath it and we could like go layer, solid settings, make this one black. And you see it gives us a new little border here. So basically what I did was I just duplicated the layer and then took the bottom one and made it go up two or three pixels, and then I put a black, uh, change it solid settings to black, so now that we have like this little black outline on the top. And then you could um, even do stuff like, maybe if I wanted to make that a sort of, I go into the mask of that one and give it like a feather, and it could give it like this sort of a shadow look to it. And then I can do something as well to this one, I can make it look neater or kind of cooler if I go control C. So I'm gonna copy the mask and I'm gonna paste it on the bar here. And if you go to the second one and you hit subtract and then you go to the mask expansion and you go backwards, you can then do the feather here and it'll create this like neat little look here. But I don't really like the way that looks with the black background. So we're just gonna stick with the normal for here. So like I said, this is all a sort of a design process. Just go through your bar, how you wanna design it, how you want it to make it look but the real core of this video is how to do the text scrolling. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a text, or the text tool, and we're gonna go right here and let's type something like breaking news. Um, today it is raining. And then all we need to do is just expand this outwards so that we can see the whole text right here. And then let's position it so that it's in the center here of our scrolling bar. And you know, you'll probably wanna make this look a little better too, like with different colors and stuff. And then now let's move it off to the edge. So I'm gonna, once it's here, I'm gonna click it, I'm gonna hold shift, and that makes it so it can only change one axis at a time. So I'm gonna be changing the X axis here. Then I'm gonna go down to, to transform, and I'm going to start the animation stopwatch. And then just move it through uh, at about four seconds is a good speed to have it go through. So we're gonna click on it, we're gonna hold shift again to make sure that we don't go up or down because they always stay perfectly level. And we're gonna make it go right over to here to the other end and we'll end it right there. And then now we have our animation going across the bottom, just like that. Oops, that didn't write fully, oh whatever. Um, so yeah, it's going all the way across the bottom. Now let's say we wanted some more of these. So what we can do is go to the very end of this and I'm gonna hit Control, Shift, D or you can just cut this piece of footage. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just splitting it right here. You can also grab the edge and just drag it. I'm just doing this so I can delete the back half so we have only the working piece right here. And then now I can go ahead and duplicate this footage. So I'm going to just click on it and click Control D. And everything I say that's Control, if you have a Mac, it's Command. That's the only difference. So Control D will duplicate this footage. And then we can move it anywhere we want. So if we put one here as well, we have two of these going. And you know, you could do this infinitely. However, it might get sort of tedious to have these going, if you're, especially if you're changing it over and over and over again. Or maybe you just wanna have one of these things going off the bottom 
over and over like infinitely into the future so you can just throw it onto a piece of footage no matter how long the piece of footage is it's always running on the bottom to do that is actually very very simple what's really powerful about after effects is we have the ability to use something called expressions which means we can like code in our own little sort of fun things to do and this one is a really easy expression so all we're going to do is we're going to go down to this one right here the first one or you can really choose any of them whichever one you want just click on one of them go into the position and then go over here to the stopwatch then we're going to click and hold down the alt key on our keyboards and then we're going to click on this right here and that's going to add ourselves an expression down here and you'll see that it automatically goes into the transform dot position because that's what it's doing right now it's just taking whatever the transform data is that's how it's working but what we're going to type in is loop out and then cycle, you don't need to add the cycle, but I just like to add it explicitly. Uh, cycle is its default sort of way of doing it, but you can just change that up a little bit. Um, if you look up loop out after effects on Google, you can look at, there's a couple different ones to sort of give it some different styles to it. So now once we have this, we need to make sure there's a semicolon at the end and click out of it and it'll save it. And now we've created ourselves a cycle. So if we take this and we re-expand it back out into infinity, you'll notice that it goes through, so it's this one right here, and right when this one disappears, it comes right back out the other side. And then it comes right back out the other side, and it does this infinitely, uh, because all it's doing is it's been told to loop. So right when it gets to the end of the animation, it puts another keyframe right afterwards, cuts it back to the right side, and it just redoes the entire animation again. So if you had complex animations, you can do this as well. And what's neat is if you wanted to change it every time it came over, you can actually click the, uh, go up to the text right here, and go to source text, and this will allow you to change it. So let's go um, one keyframe before, and let's just make a keyframe here. And then now this one, we can change the text here. So if we go over here, uh, we won't be able to see it, but let me type in breaking news tomorrow it is. Now we have the breaking news, today it is. Breaking news, tomorrow it is. And you see that it kind of, it immediately changes. And of course you see right there it kind of jumped in. That's because I didn't move it over far enough. But like I, if you adjust that correctly, you can just keep it going. And you can keep changing it with just these little things. So you could have just one scrolling tab instead of having maybe 50 or 60 by the end of it. And every time it goes through, it just changes up what it's saying. So that's the, the really neat part. I think that's the the part that really sets this away from Premiere is being able to do something like this, the loop effect, where it'll just constantly go over and over and over and over and you get this really neat and easy to use loop. That is it on this tutorial guys. I hope that I you were able to learn something about how to create this. Uh, really really neat tool and really fun to do just by throwing in a little bit of little expression and this you can you know like I said dress it up and make it look really nice on top of your footage to make a fake newscast. If you got any questions or comments go ahead and throw those in the comments section below. Suggestions for future tutorials do that as well. This one was requested a couple of times so I decided I would go ahead and do it. Um, if you want to see more videos similar to this one I'm making a video a video an Adobe related video every other day so go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can you know keep your learning going and until next time guys see ya